what are the two types of drugs that you might want to avoid for the sake of your brain? We're going to talk about that today. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about two different drugs or drug types that you want to avoid for the sake and the well-being of your brain. If you have anyone in your family who's been diagnosed with dementia or has some cognitive decline, you are not going to want to miss this episode. Are you currently taking an antihistamine medication? Well, today we're going to talk about why this may be detrimental to your brain long term. There's really two types of drugs that you want to avoid for the health of your brain. So let's dive into that. There's two classes of drugs that have actually been linked to dementia. And if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, we've talked a lot about brain health, long longevity, histamine issues, and one of these medications is actually used so frequently. The percentage of adults in the United States with allergies who used allergy medications as of 2021, now there's different classifications that I'm going to show you in this graph, but 50% used antihistamine pills like Benadryl, Zyrtec, Allegra, and uh, many other people use like nasal sprays and eye drops or a combination of these drugs. Uh, that was 26% of people. 5% of people use allergy shots, but we're really looking at how many people are utilizing these antihistamine pills like Benadryl or Zyrtec. And what is the long-term side effect of using these? In two separate large population studies, we found that these two classes of drugs, one is benzodiazepines, which is a category of medications used for anxiety, as well as people will use them for sleep. And then the second class is anticholinergic drugs. And this is where your Benadryl and your antihistamine medications, your overactive bladder medications, anything that works on acetylcholine uh, is affected here, high blood pressure, as well as allergies, colds, depression, incontinence. Those are all really the use cases for many of these drugs. So those two categories have been linked in two large population studies with an increased risk of dementia if you use them for longer periods of time, which was a handful of months. And so in both cases, the brain harmful effect really increase with the dose of this drug and also with the duration of use of these drugs as well. So, and this isn't brand new information. We've actually known this for a while. There's something called the Beers List, which is published by the American Geriatric Society, and it recognizes benzodiazepines, antihistamines, and tricyclic antidepressants as potentially not appropriate drugs for older adults. And this is really because of their side effects. We know it can cause cognitive decline. It can cause confusion, clouded thinking, some of these lapses in memory. And so if you have a family history of this, this is something to be aware of. There was a study that was done that tracked about 3,500 men and women over the age of 65 in a study. And essentially, they looked at the medications that each of these participants had taken in the 10 years prior to the study. And then they tracked them for about seven years during this time. And so people who used these anticholinergic drugs, things like Benadryl, Zyrtec, they were more likely to have developed dementia than those people who didn't. And so we know that this is a cumulative process. The equivalent of three years or more was associated with a 54% higher dementia risk than those who took that same dose for less than three months. So the takeaway point here is if you have histamine issues, if you have allergies, long-term use of these medications, whether you are in your 20s, 30s, 50s, 60s, it doesn't really matter the age. We know that they are not healthy for the brain long-term. This study was unique in that it actually looked at the use of non-prescription drugs. So these are over-the-counter medicines that people can buy. Millions of people are taking and buying on their own, and they don't know the long-term consequence to the brain. The other thing that this study showed is that those people who were taking the anticholinergic bladder medications had 
just as high of a risk as those taking your tricyclic antidepressants, which are also fall in that category of anticholinergic drugs. Not only that, but these antihistamine medications also can cause severe withdrawal symptoms. And if you've ever experienced this, you know how bothersome and how intolerable, intolerable this can be. And so when you are taking Zyrtec, say for daily for months to years, and then you stop instantly, you can experience a huge rebound of symptoms that aren't necessarily allergy symptoms. Some of them are related to allergy symptoms, but it's uh, withdrawal symptoms, which include intense itching, hives, super vivid dreams at night, and then headaches are the big ones that people will report. But usually it's just intense full body itching. So how long does this Zyrtec or this anticholinergic drug withdrawal last? There's some case studies of people who specifically have had severe withdrawal symptoms to Zyrtec, the allergy medication that's over the counter. And so what might this look like? Well, usually the symptoms will begin within about three days of that last dose taken. And then the symptoms will peak between about three to five days. And the symptoms will resolve in about seven days. That severity of itching. Some people really have difficulty sleeping because histamine is really activating to the brain. And so many people will have difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep throughout the night. And really the itching can be so uncomfortable that it can cause bleeding and uh, severe pain in the skin. If you are worried about Zyrtec withdrawal, there's other antihistamines. There's Allegra, there's Claritin, which are actually in the same class of drugs as Zyrtec. They may be less likely to trigger that, but because they're antihistamine drugs, they still may have this withdrawal effect. And then the other one that's really well known is Benadryl or diphenhydramine. This is another antihistamine, uh, which shouldn't cause that itchy withdrawal issues. But again, a lot of people know about Benadryl that it can cause drowsiness. So something to be aware of. So what are the other alternatives? You might be asking if Zyrtec and Benadryl and a lot of these antihistamines are A, problematic for the brain and B, can cause severe withdrawal. Well, I'm glad you asked. There is a lot of natural alternatives to this. And I think really about gut health and inflammation and histamine overproduction happening in the gut, uh, really driving these allergy symptoms. And so sometimes it's diet related in part. One of the things that you can do is to add in the use of saline nasal sprays. So the benefit of a saline nasal spray is it can thin the mucus and so it can help remove some of those allergens from the nose, from the mucous membranes, and help with seasonal allergies. So that's one thing. Some people really don't like the saline spray. And so there's also a lot of natural alternatives like supplementation that can be added in. One study found that taking a supplement containing butter burr four times a day was comparable to taking a dose of an antihistamine called sertrazine among patients with seasonal allergies. So butter burr is an amazing alternative. It's an herb that helps with histamine and reducing some of those allergy symptoms. Now, other nutrients that would be helpful here is N-acetylcysteine or also known as NAC. It's the precursor to glutathione. Quercetin is a really amazing nutrient here. Anti-inflammatory bromelain, stinging nettle. All of these are known for their anti-allergenic properties. And so they can decrease that body's inflammatory response, which is really the root of what's going on with allergy symptoms. There's a product that I really like that's called D-Hist by Orthomolecular, and it has essentially all of these nutrients that I just mentioned. And so I'm going to link that below the video if you're curious to learn more about these nutrients in a full script linked. Of course, none of this is medical information. I am a doctor, but I'm not your doctor. So always speak with your healthcare provider for advice before you start any of these supplements. And of course, before you discontinue any of your medication, you want to work with your healthcare provider on that. Other nutrients that could be really helpful 
that I mentioned in another video called Top Holistic Approaches to Reduce Histamine. Definitely check out that video if you found this video helpful. Or if you have allergy issues or you have histamine issues, this is a really helpful video as far as solutions and natural antihistamines. But there's peptides that really help here too. And what would this channel be if we didn't talk about the peptides that helped? So KPV is probably my favorite. It's a tripeptide, meaning it's three amino acids connected together. And that's lysine, proline, and valine, which are found in, you know, these amino acids are found in really every cell of our body. And so that tripeptide combo is really helpful at stabilizing mast cells and preventing the release of histamine. Mast cells are an immune cell that release histamine. I've seen KPV help a lot of patients that are dealing with histamine issues, whether it's due to mold exposure, uh, their environment, right? There's triggers for this histamine production. Vitamin C is also a really amazing nutrient that helps with reducing that histamine production as well. So I'll link my favorite vitamin C powder that I take. I drink that daily myself. I put it in water and it really tastes so good. It's like a treat at the end of the day. Uh, you always want to take vitamin C after a meal and not before on an empty stomach because it can lower the blood glucose or the blood sugar levels leading to you feeling very hangry and we want to avoid that at all costs. I hope you found this video helpful as far as the medications to avoid for brain health, as well as ways to naturally reduce histamine and really support your immune system in a healthy way. And also how to avoid withdrawals from these antihistamine medications. If you found this video helpful, like and subscribe, share it with somebody that you know maybe has allergies or is struggling with this or is taking Zyrtec or some of these other medications. I will see you in the next video.